Spiral, spiral, spiral. So I was super bored during quarantine. And then I just randomly stumbled upon this poster by Saul Bass, legendary designer of Vertigo, the Alfred Hitchcock movie. At first I thought, this is impossible. There's no way you can make this. But then I realized it'd be so easy in processes. Bring home the spot. So we're gonna wanna make radial spinning art that changes. When you press play, it's gonna create a new spiral never seen before, random, every single time. But that sounds really complex, right? Like there has to be a ton of code. Wrong. First we need to draw a shape. Now we need a lot of shapes. Then we're gonna need to rotate it and give it an angle. Then we're gonna wanna animate it as a loop. Then we're gonna wanna make things generative and random. And finally, we'll add our polishing touches with the color, the stroke weight. Let's code. First, we wanna add our setup and draw. Now we're gonna wanna add a shape. When you first look at a spiral, you might think it has to have a ton of code. But we're gonna go with a line. Don't worry, it'll look cool, I promise. So we're gonna wanna draw a black background for some dark mode feels. Now let's draw our line. Oh my god, we have black on black, duh. We need to add a fill. Yes, we have a line! Not a spiral though, what the hell? I know, relax. All right, so we wanna make a lot of lines for our spiral. And if we wanna do that, we need a for loop. Mmm, for loops. Write your for loop and then copy the line above. We have a bunch of lines, but they're not spirals. We're gonna to wanna to change our position of X and Y in our lines. Let's start rotating an angle. First, we're gonna to wanna to be rotating our lines, so we need an angle. We're gonna to wanna to grab the X, Y integer and minus it by Z space. Make sure you carry it by 12. To Fuck that. This is processing. We just need to add rotate. Spirals, yes. Now we need an angle for rotate to be able to function. This is gonna be what dictates the patterns of our spirals. You can see now when I change the angles, we're getting a multitude of completely different types of spirals, all by changing one number. Crazy, right? Think about how much time it would take to make every single different spiral inside of Photoshop. I feel bad for Salt Bass having to do it the traditional ways. Thanks, Saul. Let's make more lines and then add different strokes. There we go. Now that we have our spirals, let's add motion. My personal favorite way to make motion, especially if we want it to loop, is to use sine waves. We can just plug it in and get an infinite looping animation. This is not math, it's magic. All right, let's try this out. Hey, what the hell? It's moving fairly, I mean, it's like a turtle trying to make this thing. So these magical numbers aren't so magical after all. We actually found out that the sine wave uses very small decimal points between negative one, zero, and positive one. So we're gonna wanna multiply those numbers by anywhere from like 2,000 to 5,000 to even 10,000. So I'm gonna throw in a mouse event that will control the actual sine wave, thus impacting the actual spiral shape. Let's multiply wave times our new remapped mouse X. This is also gonna impact the speed as well. Let's center everything by using translate. Finally, an infinitely looping animation. Yes. You might think it's gonna take a long time to make one of these things. But, I mean, I literally just couldn't sleep, so I just popped up out of bed at 4 a.m., popped under processing, and made this thing in less than an hour. As long as you have the building blocks, you can make almost anything... Almost. Alright, so we could stop here, but we're not going to. You're gonna want to make this thing completely generative and random every single time you press play. How do we do that? Random. Okay, so we're gonna want to add a random color fill. That way we just get a new color every time. Let's make our stroke and our stroke size and then replace the old variables so that they're generative. Let's up our frame rate to a thousand and smooth it out. Yeah. Then I'm also gonna add a random angle so that we can go ahead and have a different spiral every time. And there it is, we have an infinitely looping generative spiral animation. This is just one of many infinite possibilities that you have with creative coding and processing. Most designers wouldn't see the utility, but as you can see, Saul taught us that you can use spirals inside of things like movie posters. What type of generative art do you think is the best? Interactive or just purely generative? I'd like to know for my next video, so let me know below. If you had as much fun making these spirals as I did, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to get the free code from this video, go to artnowcoding.com. I already know you're going to love what's coming up next.